Welcome back to Autodesk Maya. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the power of the Insert Edge Loop tool. So here I am in my 3D stage here, and I'm on the Polygon shelf. If I click on the cube, uh, you'll notice here that over here in the channel box, if you can, if you don't see it, just click on the channel box here on the right. Uh, scroll down to you see the Poly Cube One input, and click on that. You'll see that you have the width, depth, and height dimensions. If we middle click and drag. What that'll do is it'll scale it either up or down on there. These subdivisions here, if we highlight them and then again hold the middle mouse button down and then move right or left, what it'll do is it'll increase the subdivisions of that polygon. So instead of having one face here, we could have four or five or six and so forth. What that allows us to do is essentially manipulate individual smaller sections. So I could right click, select a face, and basically pull in and out that face. If I want to make a sort of beat up little box here, um, this would have more of that kind of feeling. I'm going to undo that by hitting Control Z or Command Z on the Mac there and keep going back until I get rid of all the subdivisions. What, however, if we don't want it to be quite so structured in terms of our subdivisions, we want to subdivide ourselves. Well, we can use the power of the Insert Edge Loop tool. This is under the Mesh Tools and right here is about the middle is the insert edge loop tool let's click on the options by clicking on this little square here and see what's available once we do that <clears throat> a window will appear either in the tool palette or it'll float out and on my and on my other monitor I have this uh, tool settings palette here and right here we have three settings we have um, relative distance from edge we have equal distance and multiple edge loops these are the three options we have Let's choose the multiple edge loops first and see what it looks like. I'm going to divide it up to maybe 10 divisions. And with one click on the edge here, you'll see I have subdivided that 10 times. If I click another direction, bam, another 10 times, which is pretty cool. If I click in between these edges, bam, I've subdivided that little section 10 times, which is uh, pretty wild. So I'm going to undo those actions uh, just by hitting Control Z or Command Z on the Mac a couple of times. The uh, I'll show you these other two. The relative distance from edge, uh, basically as you click, you basically can drag up or down on the slider here. So you get to choose relatively to the edge. Now the equal distance, what this allows you to do is if you do a single click somewhere in the middle, what it'll do is it'll basically average out the, the distance and you'll have a pretty even distribution between the two edges. So if I click here, it's going to be a pretty even divide between this this edge here and the middle and this edge at the bottom. So that's the equal uh, distance from edge does for you. Now that doesn't mean you can't also hold down the mouse after you click and move the edge. You're welcome to do that very easily. So let me undo all, all those real quick. So what are edge loops used for? They're, they're designed to basically create more detail through dividing up the space so that you can do different things. For example, uh, we're going to get into this tool later on, but we could select faces like every other face here, and we could do something like an extrusion. Now I have this tool already set up in the uh, custom shelf here, but we will go over this tool in detail, the extrude tool but we could do something like this if we have multiple subdivisions, right? Now, one thing the Insert Edge Loops will help you with is when you choose to use the soft preview, uh, the smooth preview, um, by hitting number three. So you can see here what happens to this mesh, things are being rounded out. And the reason why is because if we go back to the, the hard surface preview by hitting number one, any of these edges with the vertices are being stretched across the curves are being forced over now if I add an edge loop on one side watch what happens if I click on here and drag over and don't bring it all the way up but bring it close to the edge and then release and then click out every time you use this tool by the way when you're done you want to click on the arrow at the top to escape out and then right click go back to object mode I'll click on the object and I'll hit number three again and notice what has happened. On the left side, we have sort of a firmer structure. On the right, it's sort of rounded. Now, does this mean you have to do insert edge loop tool with uh, your uh, main preview open with number one? No, you could do it with number three with a soft preview. 
Um, but the problem with this is it's sometimes hard to see the end results. You know, if we move this over, we can kind of see how it's going to firm it up. Um, if I go up to each individual piece and drag another edge loop up, notice how that squares that one off a little bit. If I do it again over here and drag up, it's going to do the same thing. Okay, I'll click out to escape on the arrow, right click, go to object mode, and then click out so we can see the end result here. So this is how you can get uh, nice hard edges with some round curved edges with some sort of beveled type surfaces. Very easy using this uh, smooth preview mode. Again, it's one and then three is the uh, the two. Accidentally hit the wire frame mode there. So we hit number three, you could see the nice smooth preview. And then um, number one. I tend to work this way and then go back and forth. The reason why is it's easier for me to see where the edge loops lie. So if I want these all to line up, you know, and, and basically firm up these edges uh, instead of round, it's hard to see, you know, in this view. When I click on the edge loop, it's just a little more difficult to see the result. Um, so I tend to see it in number one, and then I can, you know, bring them up however far up I want. So I can drag up, uh, drag up like that, and have, you know, pretty uniform design. Again, click on the arrow to escape out, then right click, go to object mode and then click out. So I'm going to hit number three for a smooth preview mode. So uh, that's the power of the insert edge loop tool. Hopefully have fun exploring it. We'll uh, go over the extrude tool in detail in the next tutorial. Until then, cheers.